he has an act out, and then people go, "What's wrong?" And then we have to have a five minute conversation about well, the dog fart, which is where we are right now. So, <laughs> is it actually the dog, or no? We don't know. It's okay. It, I, could, it, it could ambiguity. Be that I mean, there's it's a, a very, song and dance either way. It's, yeah, there is a song. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say somebody shit themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With my people though The homie Dyke just cooked up a feast And we bout to eat it bro Fucked around and has to miss the lobster With the poutine Daddy is rolling blow dream Them boys got down a routine It's nap town culture Cooking seven courses Had to pass the torch And now I'm grabbing second portion So sit back, relax, grab a drink and a smoke It's all the brunch on the way And get prepared for the jokes Whoa Hi, and welcome to the Heart of Brunch podcast. I'm your host, Dyke Michaels, and with me as always, my co-host, Thaddeus J. McKee. Live from Indianapolis, it's Heart of Brunch. On the ones and twos, the wheels of steel, the sauce, boss of Indianapolis, and the last broke dragon. Give it up for Zach Roan, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey. A very special first-time guest with us in studio, um, uh, co-owner of Tapper's Arcade Bar in Indianapolis. Uh, welcome, Austin from Tapper's. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, How are you doing good. today? I'm, I'm great. I'm full. Uh, we ate a lot of food, and uh, I'm, on, I'm drinking beer, so I'm feeling good. We're having a good, good time. Yeah. Having a good time. Uh, before we get started, I do want to do a quick Patreon plug. Uh, if you'd like to support your boys and help us do what we do, uh, only $3 a month, uh, you can go to patreon.com backslash harder brunch um help out the harder brunch team do what we do you also get access to our free uh on demand uh back catalog library it's a good library actually there's a lot of things that have gone down so if you want to listen to us and try to cancel us uh for saying anything kind of crazy it's probably been said there Ooh, that's a great game. People can go back and listen and find submit your most cancelable moments. Oh, oh, that is a fun game. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was gonna say cancel bingo. Cancel bingo. Make a bingo card out of oh, it. Oh, we should make a bingo card. How many times did Zach say a slur? <laughs> bingo. Bingo. <laughs> oh, look at it, the first one. It's like uh, my, that's I need a new card. Free space. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I feel like it was a long time ago. It's now going to be like, it was COVID, man. I thought the world was ending. I thought we could say whatever. To it. Never mind. That didn't work out very yeah, well. It did not end. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome to the program. Uh, you, you are another one of those people that I'm like, I'm, it's crazy to me that this is your first time being on because uh, uh, like I've known you st- for I don't know seven years now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you you brought the truck in like first year, uh, the beast truck and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's. I uh, feel like we both got horn swoggled that first year of uh, when you guys opened, and it was the first year of Gen Con, and I, I feel like everyone, you and me both, and everyone thought like, oh, they're everyone from Gen Con is going to be down at this arcade bar because it's the first one in the city. <laughs> yeah, mm, and yeah. it's and it's so close to downtown. Yeah. But man, those nerds don't want to walk anywhere. It, it would. It, it's it's actually it's it's gotten better now. So it used mm. to, it took several years for us to like kind of gain that rapport with them, because like our n- main demographic, they're all there. So like mm. we lose out on all those people, oh. and, then, and then nobody knew about us yet. So mm. like all of the people from out of town. But now like you know a few years later, it's it's kind of now we now we get people who like. They make that a part of coming in for Gen Con. Like first it's night part in, of their experience. Yeah, coming to Tappers. I like, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, I mean, that's taken like. I mean, just for like in the last two years. So, I mean, it took five years to get to that point, right? So, that's crazy the first year. Because I know on my end, we prepped for, you know, yeah. we, we thought we were going to have like the busiest <laughs> the busiest time of our year. Yeah, yeah. And I know you bought a bunch of extra beer and stuff like yeah. that. But you yeah. were actually like, it was actually less, less yeah. people yeah. than normal because they were all down mm. at Gen Con. Yeah, yeah, it is a bummer. And I think, honestly, that's kind of just how those food trucks go for us. Like, it's mm. like, I think we're that place that people plan to like eat before and or yeah. after mm. they come. So they've already got that plan in place. So like you show up and like you'd think, I mean, you have a, a place full of a hundred and something people, right? Yeah. You think they're going to be hungry, but somehow they're not somehow they just, they've, they've got plans to do something before or, or they've already eaten or they're, they're going to eat after that. But yeah. When I used to work at Tango, it was that way. It's yeah. like, you don't come somewhere. And it's like, well, part of what I just learned of owning a food truck is like, 
what's the expectation of food at this particular venue? Yeah. You know, it's like, are they, because like this, you know, some breweries is just like people like, Oh, food truck Mondays. And yeah. it's like their thing. Yeah. And there's some places like, Oh, like, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't go there for food. We yeah. go there after dinner or before dinner or whatever. Yeah. I feel like it has to be a promotion. Like it has to be a thing that is standing or, I mean, you just pull up to an office building and it's like, hell yeah, everybody here wants to eat lunch. Right. So I think those, I, to me, that seems, I don't, I don't know. I've never had a food truck, but that seems like the best way to it's not no by the way. okay it, so. it sounds like what, the best what way. is the best way? like just uh, doing a festival or something uh, like? catering like specific catering gigs or or kind of proven events where you know like hey we're gonna make like penrod festival yeah usually. like yeah. big big things like that that have a track record of but you know going to an office but because like they don't there's no minimum buy-in mm, so yeah. it's just like you just pull up and it's like well i hope i hope we make our money today you know yeah, it'd be like having yeah. a, a you know a restaurant or bar and it's like i hope people show up today yeah it's kind of like yeah. fishing huh but, but yeah but we're in a completely yeah, different is. but we move our <laughs> but we move our business every day so it's really yeah. confusing well that's yeah. what you know we move the pole in different places especially like ice fishing yeah it is it is hole. it is like fishing and i'd much rather just go to the store and get fish you know mm. like that kind of thing yeah you could teach uh, a boy how to fish but you could also teach him what grocery store yeah. carries the most. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah so my grandma always said <laughs> it was the same uh but no we did that we did that sometimes and like yeah sometimes you'd get 30 people that would come down and be like okay that was okay yeah and then sometimes nobody would come down it's like all right we got to figure out a better game yeah plan. i mean unfortunately it's just never worked out for us i don't know i don't know what that is we've tried to do the lamar truck before too and it's just same, you guys have same. snacks or anything like that we just have broad ripple chips so like the you know homemade bar, broad ripple chips but i mean that's enough and then we let people bring in their own food so yeah. i mean like yeah oh, that's so, awesome yeah. yeah yeah cluster truck is like the common one but i mean it can be it can be anything really yeah i've had uh i used to go to a lot of the trivia games that were there yeah and i'm man i think that i'm like interested in trivia until i go and uh, to a real trivia game and i'm like Oh, I don't know shit about shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it takes, I mean, and it has to be hard, right? So, I mean, that's what you mean, right? Like, it's like the hardest questions ever, right? It yeah. is these people that are, they are on the far end of the spectrum. Yeah. And they are going to smash you every time. Yeah. Because, How they remember that stuff, I have no idea. But Like, when I watch my nerd stuff, I watch it for the plot. You know, like, yeah. I like Star Trek because it has interesting plots. And then when I go there and it's like... What was the number on the bathroom yeah, in season yeah. three? And it's just like, why would anyone know that? And then there's one guy who's like, obviously it was seventy three. Or, or those yeah, questions, yeah. seventy three. Yeah. Or those questions like, what type of what, what, what was the type of dog? You know, like yeah. in this scene, and you're like, that's not even fucking relevant. That has nothing like, to do with it. But yeah, I mean, you, almost I feel like, and that's on the trivia host. But I mean, you have to ask those questions because otherwise you have like a five way tie for first at the end of this thing. Oh, yeah. everybody there oh. knows everything about all of it. Yeah. And they've all studied and they have notes and like it's uh I brought a ringer one thing. time, my friend who's just like a huge nerd. Yeah. And uh it was for Ghostbusters trivia. <laughs> And the like the Circle City Ghostbusters, like the the men that dress up like Ghostbusters and yeah. they're like children's hospitals were there with like their their you know uh, proton packs and everything that they made, and we beat them and they were so salty about <laughs> it. <laughs> oh. Man, you beat them. That's good. Well, and it was definitely like I just like any sporting event I've ever won was because I was on a team that was good. I had nothing to do with the actual victory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then you know I had a few victory drinks afterwards yeah, and yeah, i was I mean, like can i wear that team. proton pack guys yeah. we're the winners we're the real <laughs> ghostbusters how did it feel uh picking on nerds like <laughs> what's that like beating up nerds you know uh, beating nerds at trivia is very satisfying you know because it's just like you beat them at their own game yeah you're beating them at their own game the guy yeah. that does the star trek one he, he's i'm just like it, i it's not even worth it to me anymore i was like i'll never be on that level of you know, like knowledge of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And plus Star no. Trek is just such a big universe. I mean, yeah. it can, like, and we, I think you're talking about Sully as a guy that had, does most of them, but I, I, it's been like, we've had this rotating cast of people, but yeah, they've now since broken down Star Trek into like all of the different series. So oh, okay. And then, yeah. and then we did, we did movies separately and then like the TV show or like, I don't know, like, yeah. So it's all, it, it, it's such a big universe that that's a hard one to, to do, but it's definitely a fun time. And I like, it always <laughs> seems to be something that's like busy in there. Like yeah. it always seems to be like, there's been ones where friends will hit me up and, and then there's like, it's sold out. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's that's very the, popular. That's the goal is to sell it out. Honestly though. I mean, uh, I mean during COVID it was like, you know, we, we did like the online trivias and everything and mm. that was great. But then, you know, I think we kind of kept jumping the gun. So we kind of lost a lot of our trivia hosts because we kept, we were like ready for it to come back and ready mm -hmm. for it to be sold out and packed and everything. But then you like, and like, you know, it's a lot of work to write those questions. Oh, so yeah. you, you, you have somebody who like writes all these questions and then like, 
And then nobody wanted, wanted to go out and do anything. And there was like these waves and these spikes and all this shit was happening. And so it was like this frustrating thing for the trivia hosts that were like, I've just spent like, you know, hours and hours and hours yeah. coming up with these questions. And then four fucking people show up. And it's like that discouragement just kept going and going and going. So we honestly, we've dialed back on the trivia because, you know, I think that just that that's what happened. You know, and yeah. then we've, we've kind of thought we, we just did actually a Star Trek one. Uh, and then we have a horror themed one, uh, nice. this, this, uh, Wednesday, mm. but other than that, we don't have anything planned for the rest of the year, but I mean, that's, if you guys ever want to do a, any kind of a trivia, yeah, a harder always, brunch trivia, yeah, anything, all right. Yeah. Brunch trivia. That's yeah. an interesting we, we, topic. We, we, what I, happened we, on episode three, season four <laughs> of harder brunch? You what know, is Thad's address? What is, oh, you God. know, what's always really surprises me how much people are into is bingo. Yeah, like we, get a group of oh, like yeah. millennials together, play some bingo. Yeah, yeah, just like, but you can make it like anything. You can make bingo like cat bingo, or yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> like just like goofy pictures of cats or whatever. You know, like it, do, do you guys have a like a, a back room? Like, is there an event space in the back or what no? Is no, I mean maybe that's like a in hindsight maybe a bit of an oversight there because like you know just having being able to rent out a little space would be cool. But yeah, no, we don't. It's okay. just it is what it is, right? Okay. We maximize that floor plan to. Pack as many people in there like normal. For some like, reason, like, I always thought there was like a hidden room that I just never seen before. I was like, oh, that's that's yeah. back in there. There, there is like, uh, yeah. If you go back towards the back, like by the bathrooms, there's just like there's an office back there, and then there's a hallway that just goes outside. So mm. it's nothing. So you guys, nothing tap, special. Tappers, great name. Yeah. Uh, beautiful artwork in there. It's like all. It's very. I mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about arcades. Is we're talking about nostalgia. Yeah. You know? Or I guess for some people, I guess it's Gen Z. It's like kind of like a nostalgia, like a, I don't even know what you would call that. It becomes Someone like else's a, nostalgia. It becomes like, like a backdrop to like be a part of it. You know, I think mm -hmm. in a way, like it's like you never really even grew up around arcades, but like you yeah. knew about this and it's kind of a cool thing that you, you see within like that nerddom, like, like world that like you might be able to experience it and kind of be there. And so you feel cool. But also what surprises me is like a lot of these like Xbox and PlayStation, like they have these like little mini games that would be like asteroids, Pac-Man, Galaga. Mm. So oh, yeah. these guys come in where you're like, you're 21. Like how could you have ever known how Galaga works? But they've played it on some kind of a console version mm. of like okay. what they've done. Yeah. So a game within a game. You, you feel like there's no way they're going to know how to play it, but they're like, no, dig dug, no way. But like for them, it's like, it's the first time seeing an actual physical like that's what's weird about these things is they're like a, they're one box mm. that plays one, one game. game and yeah. like that's so lost in oh, today's yeah. world right so it's like but these get these kids who come in I mean they're like they're like a they're like they've just never seen a physical arcade game of that game that they played on their PlayStation which is just a weird mm -hmm. thing but I mean this it makes whole sense. giant box to play you know yeah. Miss Pac Man yeah interesting and and for the viewers that don't understand the name Tappers yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, it's because of the tapping noise, right? Uh, yeah, so it's like multi thing. So yeah, you tap on a button, right? And then yep. you also tap a beer. So that's where it comes from. It's like there's two. We started with just beer and wine. Kind of focus on craft beer was kind of the the point. Uh, yeah. So it's just like mm. I, I guess uh, it's got two dual meanings. Dual right? meanings. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also an arcade game called Tappers. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Where you slide a <laughs> beer right. down the. But, so that oh, game really? is called Tapper. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, okay. But yes, but yeah, my yeah. bad. You're yeah. so far off. What a horse's ass. But no, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> Tad gets a pass on his. But. That 100% is it. But like, yeah, but you like, yeah, you you tap the beer in the game. Like that's the point of it. Or like you're you just pull on this little handle that's supposed to be like a handle of like pouring a beer. But yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. and you're trying to feed the whole bar. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think yeah. I've seen that in a movie or something like that. Also, yeah. one weird thing is like if you look at our logo, I don't know if anybody look, what, it, but if you notice, like there's like a, it's like a mug, and then like the handle of the mug is actually the shape of Indiana. Oh. So, like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go, Indiana. I don't know that like that's like the smaller version of it, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. If you ever anybody ever looks at that, it's like the FedEx arrow that you may see. Uh, you know, I mean, once you see that arrow in FedEx, yeah, you can't just, unsee yeah. it. So yeah, what, what's you, what was your uh, connection to arcade games, like, personally? I mean, personally, like, the, the idea was just brought to me, right? So, I mean, I didn't really have... I mean, I remember playing games, like, it, just arcade games, like, in the mall and things mm -hmm. like that. But, I mean, nothing, like... I, I wasn't... Uh, I mean, to be honest, like, I wasn't really that into video games. Like, I, I had mm -hmm. consoles, like, my parents, they had bought, like me slash actually just them like a nintendo and then a yeah. super nintendo and then like they would stay up till three o'clock in the morning 
playing that, but then I got to play it sometimes too, which was cool, right? But like, uh, I mean, I really wasn't ever really into video games. So, uh, so Are you I like a sports it. guy? Uh, no, I don't know, man. It's like such a funny thing. Like I don't, I don't really have a thing. I racing. I mean, honestly, I like racing. Yeah. Okay. Like auto racing. is like, my, Oh, that's a good guess. Thing. Yeah. 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 It was a good guess. I didn't, you didn't tell me. I thought you were doing, I thought, I thought, oh, I was like, are you just but, yes handing his thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, so I own it with Jeff. So Jeff, uh, he is like, he could talk to you about video games. Uh, I mean, endlessly. Right. Until you don't want to hear about video games anymore which you is just great. thought it was a good business idea yeah so he came to me and he was like hey i need help you know what, what what do you think could you could you be a part of this i mean he had gone to like a convention i think like either chicago or columbus ohio i don't know which one but he, he had gone to a arcade bar like afterwards mm -hmm. and said like this is really cool but like i understand the video game part of it uh I need somebody else to like do the other part, the beer part, the, the, yeah, that part, the business yeah. part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, so, was, what was your background? Uh, I, I've done a lot of different things. So I worked, uh, I went to school for recording engineering. So recording mm. engineering and entertainment business thought I was going to be like a producer. I thought I was going to be in a band, honestly, mm. but then the band fell apart when I was like 17. So then I was like, I got to do something. I got to go to college. So went to school for recording engineering, entertainment business and then like, you know, I was broke and then I had to, I was in, this was in Florida. So I had to move back to Indiana and, mm. and with my parents and then just, you know, uh, there's not a lot of jobs within that. I mean, I think it's a little easier now, but I think this is also like at the point where it's like anybody could build a studio for $3,000 in their basement. So mm. like recording studios were kind of dropping, Being, yeah, you know, like they, now. yeah, they weren't really popular. So anyway, I just had to make a thing. So I went into like audio visual, like within hotels and convention centers, things like set up those kind of things. And then I left that to go be a air traffic controller. So way, way random thing, wow. but yeah, I just yeah. kind of, isn't that what they it. say is like the, the, the most stressful job. Yeah, they do. Like yeah. That? Yeah. Uh, and I, highest suicide it's not, rate. not stress. Like honestly, that, that job highest suicide rate. Yeah, I've heard, that's I've what heard they say. Them, yeah. I never knew anybody that like that, uh, killed themselves. So, that's good. uh, I can't <laughs> confirm that, but like, no, and I never really heard it, but I mean, I think it does. I think it is like, but also like the, those systems have gotten a lot more sophisticated to where, I mean, there is a lot of pressure cause you get a lot of people on those planes, yeah. but like there's so many things that talk to you and like these things that are communicating with each other that it's like, it's almost impossible for, I mean, there's near collisions, but I mean, in the sky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's yeah. so much space. Wait, that's yeah. silly. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you, do you find yourself at your new job? If you like, <laughs> if you like mess up someone's beer, you'd be like, at least it's not an airplane. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, but also when you're doing it, like you don't think about them. Like you just think about it like a video game in a way, or like, it's just like, this isn't real. Um, like you don't yeah. think about there are 200 people on that plane and there are 400 people on that plane. And if they crash, now we have 600 people like dead, but well, you don't how hear many, that many. <laughs> how many near collisions yeah, would collision, you say yeah. happen a year? Uh, man, I don't know. Probably more than you think. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, also, it's that's what makes it safer. So anytime there is a near collision, like there's there's systems that put, get it put in place and there's a new rule. So there's this mm. book of rules that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Safer so anytime there's an accident, they like they'll do whatever caused that accident. They'll they'll make a rule that makes sure that that doesn't happen again. Uh, near collisions, same kind of thing. That would be like a facility rule that they would put in place to make sure that wouldn't happen. But yeah, anyway, I mean, I only did it for like a year and a half. And then I, I kind of got into this point where it was like, it's great money and it's good. Like it was good. Like I could retire when I was like 55, but it was almost scary in a way to think like, like uh, I'm going to be doing the same thing mm, yeah. for the next, I mean, at the time I was 25. So it was like, I have to do this for 30 years. And that's just like, I, honestly, that's terrifying to be like doing what you're going to be doing when you're like, like when you go to retire, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, in a way, like I was very thankful to, to have that job, but like, I just knew that there was like kind of more, there's no creativity and I'm kind of a creative person. So it was like, so I got to get out. So you, I just quit. I just you, went in. You one. stacked up some cheese being yeah. an air traffic controller. And then when the business opportunity came through, you're like, well, yeah. no, I actually I just quit. I just up and quit. Oh, I just, just walked in one day. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to yeah. do this. And they were like, why? And I was like, I just don't like it. So like, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like a year later I met Jeff and he was like, Hey, you want to do this thing? And I was like, yeah, sure. Let me just yeah. say something real quick to the yeah. air traffic controllers out there. One, don't hurt yourself. But two, uh, to the pilots, 
Open your eyes. <laughs> there shouldn't have to be the problem. Yeah, that's been they, the issue. They just be sleeping up there. Be I, like, hey, I'm a pilot. I went to pilot school. <laughs> I'm going to phone it in. And then you making you guys yeah. work your butts off. And then, oh, the, there was almost a collision because some drunk pilot. I mean, someone tried to scully. Sometimes it's the uh, sometimes it's the controller's fault. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah usually that's what I'm saying. There's some kind of an error that got yeah. fixed. But, yeah. The pilots don't want to die. That's the thing is they're on this thing. They don't want to die just as much as everybody else on there doesn't want to die. Right. So except like, that one pilot, right. Wasn't there that one pilot just recently that just almost flew into a mountain? Well, they, the, oh, the guy that they were to? like, yeah, do a barrel know. roll or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 he got, he got peer pressured by like his cabin. <laughs> no, there was a, there. <laughs> <laughs> do a roll. Do a roll. All right, everybody, put your sleeps on. No one's gonna call me a wussy. Yeah, I think I think I got the story backwards, but it, no, a guy walked into it. He 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 had some sort of piloting experience, or I think so. And he walked he walked into an airport, walked straight onto a plane, hijacked the plane, took it. There was no one else on the plane but him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it was like in and a, then, like Alabama or something. Yeah, like and then he he was just, he said something goofy and then did a, like a barrel roll yeah yeah and then crashed the plane yeah i think he like it worked at the airport so somehow yeah. he used his access to like gain like access to the airplane and there's no keys right so you just get in it you yeah. just push the button well he might have been like a retired pilot he's like i'm gonna try air traffic controlling yeah he was like a janitor <laughs> he's like, i'm yeah. going out this way yeah uh, he was a- i mean my like flight simulator you can learn a lot so you can and it's not that much i mean it's it's clearly different but yeah you can figure out what all the controls do enough to yeah. just take off. Yeah, and he did. Goodwill. I, I do think that he didn't make it though. I think that the mm. plane ran out of gas. And oh, that's why. Yeah. You don't do a barrel roll on an empty plane. That's what no. I was saying. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, I'm sure it was fun though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great way to go out. Yeah, uh, like some <laughs> mental issues. But though. also going going back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I I actually lost it after I. The bear roll suicide. <laughs> I had a good question for you too, man. Yeah. Uh, no, I was just like, man, that's it, like, that's none of that's even in the same vein in your work history. No, like, yeah. it's very interesting. Like, yeah. Do you, do you like going from like one thing to something completely different? Yeah, actually, I, I think that's almost like a thing. Like, where it's like, I would, I really like to master things, but then it's like once you master it, you're almost just like, all right, this is fucking boring. I want to do something else, right? Uh, I don't know if anybody else is guilty of that, but it oh, just yeah. feels like. It feels like, okay, you're done. Like now, and like, I don't know, life is just full of like, it's just so long. Like you can make it long or you can make it short. So the short life was being an air traffic controller until mm. I was 55. But like the longer version of that is doing this, then doing this, yeah. then doing that. I don't know. But. No, I, I agree. And I, I think that's kind of where like with this podcast, for instance, it's like, I know so many creative people yeah. and then like, but like getting everyone together is like greater than, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like, Everyone feels that kind of malaise, I think, and no matter what they're doing, and then you just get a bunch of creative people around, and then all of a sudden it's like the honeycomb hideout. Yeah. And everyone's just like, oh yeah, like, well, yeah, you know, Zach was Zach was a guest, uh, Thad was a guest, um, Casey, I, I just grew out of the basement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like everyone that's a part of the show has been like a guest and hanging around and stuff. And uh, I used to do a lot of like um, cooking stuff that was the same way with like uh collaborative cooking and because it was like i just knew so many chefs that were just like you know they work at a restaurant they make the same seven things yeah and they're just so tired like i can make so much more yeah and they're probably capable of way more than that right but yeah so i love partnering with people and like getting them to like okay so what else are you good at like how do you want to contribute and then and then i'm always amazed at like the how much awesome you know comes out of that yeah but yeah doing the same thing it would you know uh, how did you guys pay? I, I hate to always bring up COVID, but man, it was so hard on everybody. That's a good question. You love COVID. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of COVID, but anyone that survived COVID, I, my hat's off to you. And I'm always like, kind of, I, I was really interested and impressed at how people adapted. Like you said, you were doing like online trivia. Yeah, we, we just went completely online. So, I mean, I feel like from our perspective, it was like, I don't know. The thing happens and you're like, oh, this is going to be two weeks. And then it's like, oh, it's going to be a month and it's going to be two months. And like, I mean, we're all on that same, th- like in that, on that same journey together where it's like, how long is this going to be? So I think when it was two weeks, we we're like, all right, cool. Well, we're going to keep everybody on like the staff and like, let's just repaint things. Like, let's just do this like deep clean of everything so that we can. But mm-hmm. then like that wore off and we're like, all right, we got to do something to like keep engaging with 
our customers in a way and maybe we can make money. So like Twitch was like very much like, uh, I don't want to say new, but like it wasn't what it was today. And I think actually COVID probably made it what mm. it is today. So we started, we started a Twitch channel and uh, we had all this equipment that we could kind of start using and we just started piecing it all together. Cameras actually were like the wild, like they were like, like this camera that I'm looking at, it was like, I mean, like it's like an $80 camera, but like it was like $300 mm. at this time too. Cause like everybody fucking wanted to go online and do these things. But yeah, so we just started playing games uh, and just, talking and just being funny and then like you could have this you could have this interaction with your customers online like within a chat or whatever that like it felt like they were still they they felt like they were still a part of that of tappers and yeah. we felt like they were also a, a part of it as well and then like you know i like so then people sub and everything and so you can get you can get paid off of that but then we also like so we did we did hours everybody kind of broke it down so we kept we didn't everybody at a certain point we like like okay we can't keep paying everybody but nobody wanted to like not do like something right mm. so we never actually like in, in hindsight maybe this was wrong nobody ever got covid there because we were doing it but we were just like I, nobody wanted to stay at home so we're like we're just going to keep coming in and doing stuff mm. so yeah we would have trivia we'd, we'd play games and just like just laugh and talk about the games or whatever and like like 12 hours a day for oh uh, i don't know months wow until we could open back up, right? Yeah. But like, and then we did like some carry out beer sales, but uh, you know, and we did some t-shirt sales. So whatever we could do to kind of make a little bit of money. Honestly, we didn't really, didn't really make that much money off of it. But it was also a way to kind of kind of keep engaged and yeah. kind of be like, we're still here and we're still trying to to provide entertainment for you, even though it's not physically in an arcade with controls and everything. But we're gonna we're gonna do our best to kind of still be your friend, right? Yeah. Still, still make everybody feel like they're a part of it. That's awesome. I was honestly kind of pleasantly surprised i think at the beginning about how much people wanted to support their like favorite businesses yeah, and yeah. stuff and because mm. like for a lot of things i was just like oh like in my head like a, a barcade yeah i can't go in there like yeah i'm sorry yeah. i'll see you after the pandemic yeah. but like maybe like, but That's, like, that was the worst part it's like it's yeah. just like this fucking touchy breathy thing like yeah. we don't have tables either yeah so it was like terrifying it's like you like yeah and i mean not to cut you off but i mean like you have like all these like where we are, it's like you're in a restaurant and you have tables that can easily be spaced six mm -hmm. feet apart or, or however long, however yeah. far it needed to be. You can't do that at you all. You can't man. do that. Like yeah. everybody's moving from place to place to mm. place to place. That's the whole nature yeah. of what we're, that's yeah. an arcade. Like you don't stay in one place. When I, re but, I, yeah. I, I also remember at the beginning when it was just like, we were like, you know, people were saying like, oh man, we, I can't believe we were shaking other people's hands all this time. That was yeah. so gross. We're never going to do that again. Yeah. I remember when they were like shaking hands is canceled forever. Yeah. And we we're never going to do that anymore. And they were like, all the buffets were going to be closed. Yeah. And it was like, we we're just going to live in this completely different world. And so like, yeah, that must've been terrifying. It was yeah. like owning <laughs> like Some an arcade bar. Hands on. Yeah. yeah. Everything's but, being touched. Yeah. But you can, I mean, you just got to do what you got to do. So we kind of, well, I don't know with that, we just did like an A day and a B day. So like we would shut off every other game every other day. Uh, so no. one day you come in and these this set of games would be on. The next day we'd do the opposite, right? And we posted it and kind of had a calendar yeah. so that people knew. But I mean, like you're still like it's still. I mean, it, yeah. you're still close to people. Oh, but yeah. I mean, you just do what you can, and I think people appreciated that, right? Yeah, so we yeah. got we got sanitizing wipes and like you know we made sure that everybody wore masks and that was a nightmare i'm sure if anybody worked in food or any oh, yeah. any kind of an establishment with events well just the masks things was just especially like, once people start yeah. drinking yeah like once yeah. people started drinking it really became like this weird yeah. kabuki theater of yeah. like well i have my mask in my hand is that okay and i'm like yeah. i don't know man yeah. like i don't make the rules here but, yeah, but you gotta pretty loose you do end. you do what you can do you know mm -hmm. and like that's and i think that that level of like just effort yes was like just like that's what people appreciated, right? Mm. So I think that whatever you could do to kind of maybe try to make it safer than what it appeared as though it was, like yeah. was better, uh, you know. And then also just my job at that point, trans, like it was, it was less about running a bar and more about like how do I find programs and grants and things to support what we're sure, doing, you know? Because sure. like and like yeah, I, I never thought I'd own a business and like then it would shift from like owning a business and trying to get people in to drink things to like then like. What kind of government programs can I do? What kind of things can I, what kind of assistance can we get and everything? But yeah. it, it actually was really good. So, I mean, I, unfortunately, yeah, there, there was a lot of attrition and I, I feel bad for people who, you know, obviously weren't able to make it through it, but you know, there was, I mean, just being able to, and I also appreciate the fact that there were all those programs that like, yeah, I mean, sure. without those, 
it wouldn't have worked. Right, like, right. It really wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Do you think it's like you, like you said, without those, it wouldn't work? But like, if you made it through the pandemic, your business is like probably going to be successful for the next ten years. Do you guys mean? I I, 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 I survived COVID. I, I would hope so, but I don't know. Like, I mean, it like it we're still recovering you know i think i think but also you just never know like so in in 2019 so we started in 2016 we expanded in 2019 and it was like balls to the wall it was like great like we finally and like we started this this thing with nothing and then Mm -hmm. like in 2019 we were able to kind of do some stuff we had built up enough cash to kind of make it what we wanted it to be in 2016 so 2019 we had a great year going to 2020 was like amazing like this was everything we wanted and all of a sudden the whole thing shut down but like I don't know. Cause like now we're still in like this part where it's like, it's still good. Everything's still great. Like mm-hmm. it's still, we're still profitable. Everything's going well, but there's this sure. natural like decline in business. Like I said, what I was telling you earlier, it's like you, you start off as this like shiny, nice, cool thing, you know? And then mm-hmm. also something else, like spe- especially in Indianapolis, kind of the way I, everybody wants to go to the new hot thing. Yeah. Right. And if you're not that thing anymore, then it becomes like a, I don't know, a bit of a decline. Right. So I don't know if we're maybe just like picking up now in 2023 where we would have, where that natural like line would have been drawn from mm, yeah. our like super high sales in 2019, 2020. But yeah, I, I do think that I think if you can make it through that, I think mentally. Right. And I think just like, I mean, you, you can do anything really. I mean, I think, I think, but I hope. Yeah. 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 yeah we'll see. <laughs> well, let's take a quick commercial break. Uh, before we take that commercial break, before we take a break, I've been taking a coffee break this whole time with Tinker Coffee, and I got to tell you, I feel like we got we got slipped some good stuff here. We got this. Uh, uh, I'm going to butcher the name, unfortunately. The big bag. The the Finca La Jolla. Um, mm-hmm. We got this uh, straight from our friends at Tinker, and it has a uh, some smooth, rich milk chocolate notes, uh, fresh strawberry melon, and some floral notes. Um, if you are like me and you don't want to go out and get coffee you just want to deliver to your door tinker will do that for you uh, you can have a coffee subscription subscription excuse me and have coffee delivered straight to your door if you use promo code brunch 25 percent off your first order can you believe that b-r-u-n-c-h brunch. Uh, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back this week on the after brunch podcast <laughs> hey, hey, you guys have friends out there who are heels, put hot sauce, and this fucking mouth. Don't do it! It hurts! It's bad! It hurts so bad! I, I think I'm gonna live. I, for a second, I thought I was gonna die. Yeah. Oh, I'm how, how is yours, Peter? I feel like you just got a nice spicy, was really good. spicy shrimp. You're like, it was fantastic. You really kick the shrimp so up and I used a reasonable amount. I mean, I'm still feeling it. It's mm-hmm. still like I have a nice burn in my mouth, but <laughs> I'm crying now. In so real here's life. the thing. If the hot- Join us at patreon.com slash harder brunch. And we're back. We're talking uh, arcades. Uh, do you like the phrase barcade, or how do you feel about that? Uh, it's Ooh. good, actually. There's a company, and they're, they're based out of like there. I think their first location was in Brooklyn, uh, and they're called Barcade. Oh, okay. And they're very. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they, I'm sure they're uh, like they they will go after people who say or not not necessarily say, but like if you write barcade, like mm. they're they, they'll they'll send a letter. Gotcha. You know, so I mean, I think it's cool. It makes sense. Like, I mean, barcade is yeah, like, what it is. And like, it's like, it's like, such a good play on words, like but. restaurant. You know, yeah. for like uh, yeah, for babies. No, like for like a Hooters or like a Tilted Kilt. Those are called restaurants. Ah, oh, I thought it was like a, a place where like people will gather and breastfeed. No, that's is that a place? Where, where do they do that? Farmers know. markets for, for restaurants, like yeah. outside parks yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we we were very excited to have you on because we, we we do a different theme every week, and for some people to try to, it sometimes it's we're we're really just uh, taking a wild stab at making it. But like for you, I was just like, oh man, this is great. We yeah. do arcade games, like yeah. we have the theme. Like I was looking forward to this for like weeks. Cause nice, like, me too. Yeah, very yeah, fun. Uh, which brings us to our uh, smoking goose quack, quack. brunch breakdown. Smoking goose. Uh, Located at uh, 407 Dorman Street. Um, it's where we go for all our fancy meats, our nice charcuterie. Um, they made a couple, uh, well, we'll get into it. They were on They were on some of the dishes today. 
Um, so we wanted to, we want and you said you were a pretty open eater, which is great. Yeah, you know sometimes we'll get a, a list of food allergies or I, food things I, that people don't like. Yeah, I do only like I I don't care for tomatoes. I know mm. that that's probably oh. like what's wrong with you, but like I don't know, it's just something about it. It's pretty. I mean, you take it off, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the burger, tomatoes yeah. did veer their head, but they're so easy to just you know yeah not eat. Yeah. But. Um. Yeah, that's and that's only one. I always yeah. I that are beets. Beets are like beets are not my. I don't like. I don't like beets. Did you did the, you eat the, the soup? Yeah, was there beets there in there? There's beets in that soup. Okay, so I like beets. <laughs> he likes it. Here's the thing. Uh, you got to hide them. You got to hide yeah. the beets. You got to slip yeah. the beets in, I yeah. feel like. The um, soup was delicious. I mean, I think I said, I was like, I've never had this before, but. Uh, yeah. For a former producer, I thought you would notice the beets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get yeah. That, la- that laugh button. Oh, okay. Well. Uh, so uh, the theme was uh, classic arcade games and... Um, Man, I had a lot. I had a lot of ideas, like a lot of different ways we could have gone with this. But I was trying to think back onto some of like favorite, and then it was like it's weird because I would start thinking about a video game versus like the actual like arcade. I would, wanted to keep it arcade specific, mm-hmm. um, but like man, there's so many. Like I grew up, I was a kid like in the '80s and '90s, so like there was so many specific games. That came around like that Ninja Turtle game. Yeah, the side scrolling was huge when I yeah. was kid. The Simpson uh, co op game. Yeah, like yeah. the big one where you jump on each other's shoulders. Right, like that was huge. Uh, I remember like when Mortal Kombat just came out. You know, in the arcades, and there was oh, there's blood in a video game. Yeah, it's insane. Also, a little plug: we do have the new Mortal Kombat One that just came oh. out, so. and we have it in a in an arcade like console thing. So with like. The buttons and the joystick and everything. Right now? So, yeah, right now. Yeah, oh. we just did it like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. All right, we'll see. You. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want yeah, to. Super I, cool. I so. will be in there this week. I want to check yeah. that out. Yeah, it's fun. The visually, like amazing. Right. They kind of slowed the game down a little bit, and uh, but it's it's really cool. So it's really it's really well done. So yeah. <laughs> it's just like we get there, it's not moving. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it, it's, it's frozen. Slow, yeah. No, it's mean, slower than it usually was. But like the Are slowing sure? it down, like you can just see the moves a lot better mm-hmm. and everything. It's 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 really. I cool. got you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, those games are just insane now. Yeah. Well, and so that's, and I don't want to get too far off topic here, but like, that's one of the things I like is like, you'll have some super old school games, but then you have something new like that. Yeah. Uh, one time you went in there and there was like a, like a local made game or was like some, yeah. some dudes just made an arcade game. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that might've been Skyker. We do like an indie game development like night that we do like, yeah. and those guys, uh, this is, a. Uh, uh, th- there's a, a like a class that they teach at IUPUI, so they bring some of those games. The problem with our venue is we're 21 and over, so a lot mm. of those guys can't, can't come in. But like the ones that can, like they can kind of show off their their new games mm. and let people play them. People who are into games. So uh, I don't think we have any one of, any of those planned for the rest of the year, but mm. we at least do that once a year. But I think you're talking about Sky Cursor, so that's like a, a local group of guys. There's three guys that uh, kind of put that together, uh, and it's. It was good. Like, I mean, visually amazing. And they, mm. they actually just put out a new uh, a new game called House of the Gun Dead. So okay. it's like enter the gungeon themed, uh, like, I don't know, uh, like gun, light gun game. Yeah. yeah. So super, super cool. Super well done. Like kind of like not so like linear where like it's like the same thing all the time. There's like different doors so you can choose different like mm. ways to go. Yeah. Uh, but it's a different game each time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, but but it's really well done. Anyway, we just put that in there. So like, that that's from the same group of guys that did the Sky Cursor. So Sky Cursor isn't in there anymore. But yeah, the new nice. one's in there. Yeah. So compared to the game though, that you saw today, yeah. What do you think about Zach's game? Zach made a game. Yeah. For harder. Yeah, I mean, that was very impressive, honestly. Yeah. I Tell mean, us a little bit about that, real quick, before we. I made a uh, Brunch Invaders, which is kind of just a play off of the Space Invaders game. I'll put in a, a clip of like the actual gameplay or whatever, yeah. but I kind of themed it like I had a mustard bottle that was your your ship, so that was me, and then I had like clips from you guys saying stuff, and the, when you you would hit the little aliens and stuff like that, it would uh, do that. That was it was fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's interesting. So everything was like game. brunch food. Yeah, the things you hit like that yeah. would normally be the aliens, and like you're like. All those games are like that same thing, but like the, yeah. those little those things that you're trying to shoot are aliens, and you're like the people trying to keep the aliens out. But when he had yeah. forgotten that you were the guest this week, and he yeah. brought it over, and I was just like, "Man, you whip this up for for 
Yeah. For the guest oh, really? this week. Yeah. I was so impressed. And he was like, oh, oh yeah, that is this week, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was like, no, I've just been working on this. This is my time. I was like, okay. I mean, it was impressive. Yeah. I mean, those, are, those are hard to do. Yeah. You should yeah. bring it to the indie game dev thing. Yeah. I was, I was hearing about that. That that sounds a lot of fun. Like, yeah. what do you bring it in? Do you like bring it in as like a program and they, they play it on a whatever, or, like at whatever state you want to show it to people? Yeah. I mean, it can be a fully done game. It can just be one level of a game. It can oh, be anything, okay. right? So and it can be, you bring in your own thing. So like, we don't necessarily provide any equipment, but like you could bring it in on your laptop and people could just play it on there with arrows and space bar. So yeah. it doesn't have to be, or you could bring in a controller, you could bring in whatever, but yeah. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. I definitely would like to be a part of that next time. Yeah, I will, uh, I'll let you guys know when we do that thing again and awesome. yeah, connect you with those guys too. Yeah. Uh, so the, 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 the menu that we planned for you today uh, started off with uh, Donkey Kong. And for Donkey Kong, uh, I did fried plantains, and then like a like a cherry punch. Um, the, the plantains were something like that's what I used to do the brunch at Black Acre. That was like always the side that I made, and I kind of did it once just as a side because I think we had a burrito, and then people were just like, "These are great." Yeah, they were great. Like, it was like yeah. just became like a staple, and I hadn't done them in a while, and I was just like, "Oh yeah." Yeah. Donkey Kong plantains. I feel like that goes well. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. That was the start of what I didn't know was going to be the most epic brunch that (laughs) I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Like just kept coming. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the barrels in Donkey Kong. Yeah. 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 (laughs) No, the plantains were my favorite part. I didn't have any of the donkey punch, but, uh, (laughs) but yeah. I'm not trying to get too off script. Uh, Fried plantains. That's where I got. I would eat that a lot in Haiti. Mm, right yeah and it felt like a haitian thing and like the way you make yours is softer and i didn't know it, i'm not it's not a complaint i sure. like both of them yeah but is there is there a style of plantains that i'm not aware of uh i think it's just the way that i make them is i fry them and then smash them and then fry them again okay and so something i've them. noticed with plantains is that like people will cook them and use them in all sorts of like like the spectrum of ripeness okay anywhere from like where they seem almost like potatoes and their firmness to where they they get really dark and they're they're softer and sweeter and i mean i feel like there's a lot of different varieties of plantains okay yeah like it's like that with like plantains and different roots when you go out to the the caribbean and i don't know there's just you know 20 different types they get they get sweeter the older they get so I, like oh, uh, I'd always is that why they were so sweet yeah I always these pick, are old yeah I always pick like ones that are like like not don't like the green ones are like the green ones are so hard to peel either mm-hmm. way too mm-hmm. so it's just like I try to get them when they're nice and brown like right before they get squishy the brown ones can you make a plantain bread like instead yeah, of banana bread yeah, yeah that's a good question absolutely. yeah absolutely um, and then the second one was the ninja turtle. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're going a little out of order. Uh, I did the uh, the pizza and uh, like Ninja Turtles was definitely one of my favorite uh, like scrolling games or whatever. Um, the original one for Nintendo was terrible, but the one that you played in the arcade was awesome. Yeah, and so I did a uh, uh, pizza power, three pizzas in one. I did pizza bagels, pizza uh, rolls, all on a uh, you know fire fire cooked pizza. Which yeah. seems like something Ninja Turtle would eat. It, yeah, I mean it was wild. Yeah, I mean pizza rolls and bagel bagel bites or what are the, is that what they're called what was that? yeah pizza bagels i, I pizza went through bagels. a i went through a phase where i was like so the ninja turtles will say crazy pizzas that they're eating in their episodes so i went through a phase where i was making the different ninja turtle pizzas and i kind of considered that but they're all really gross like jelly beans and you know marshmallows and pepperoni and stuff yeah and so i just went with the uh the pizza inception yeah pizza on pizza on pizza yeah, yeah. This game compared to that that first Ninja Turtle game, like because I played both, and like this actually looked like the cartoon. Like you could recognize the people, I'm like oh that's Bebop, that's Rocksteady. Uh, the game was just kind of like I who are the Fireman? Who are these <laughs> bad guys? Like it, it, and it happens with video games a lot where they they have like a pre existing game and then they just like slap like a turtle shell on you know yeah. like a turtle skin on it or yeah. whatever yeah and i feel like that's how that first game was it was like this is yeah what also is just like those movies like the live action movies they yeah. kind of were like it's kind of weird looking like turtle people right yeah. yeah but yeah oh the first one yeah yeah, yeah we're just like this is creepy kind of my kids going through a turtle turtle phase pretty hard and like 
I'll say there's a lot of things where you go back and like, wow, I really liked the original, but I got to say the turtles got better the more they redid them. Yeah. Like number one just doesn't hold up as well as yeah. I'd like it what to. What are you talking about? The, the child casino? <laughs> the, child, <laughs> the foot clan was just a bunch of 14 year olds smoking menthol cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, and then there was the, well, you skipped over your Tetris. I, oh, oh yeah, te- yeah. Te- Tetris. So uh, I had just recently watched the Tetris, like the, it wasn't a documentary, but it was like a movie about like that. I just found it very interesting how it was like created by a guy in the, in Soviet Russia. And then basically like the Soviets were just like, no, you don't own anything. We own everything that you create. And then this guy that came over and like, there was this kind of war for the rights to it. And some people own rights to arcade. Some people own rights to like handheld. And it was right when like Game Boy was coming out. And this guy keeps flying to Russia and trying not to get like thrown in a gulag, <laughs> but like trying to acquire these rights or whatever. And so it was very interesting. And like, you, like I remember playing Tetris back on like a PC game, and it, it is like they have like Russian music, it's the and, Russian like, the, music, and, yeah, and, and, and the, the Kremlins in the yeah. background and everything. Yeah, yeah, and there is an arcade. Like I don't think it ever, act, it never had its actual own arcade game mm-hmm. uh, or like cabinet, I guess. But it was a thing that you'd put in like like a Sega multi cabinet thing where you could just plug in plug in whatever board, and then they it came with like a sticker that you could sl- slap on the side. But the sticker that went on the side would be like. I don't know what they're called, but like those, like those, like Russian buildings with like the like almost like a Hershey Kiss looking yeah, thing yeah. on top. Yeah, I don't know. That's probably, there's clearly a name for that. But I, I just know. kept calling it the Kremlin. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, sure it's like that. <laughs> yeah. So like the artwork on the side. So like that's the start game, the start oh. of the screen, and then like the artwork on the side would be the same, but just like more not pixelated, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. And the R is backwards. Uh, yeah. for Mother Russia. Yeah. Russia. Yeah. Uh, so did a grilled cheese, which um, Zach expertly cut into Tetris shapes. I had this whole idea to do it, and then I lost all faith in doing it at the last minute. I was like, Zach, I need your help to t- cut. And I thought he did a great job. Yeah. Because uh, I was about to butcher some grilled cheese sandwiches <laughs> up. What type of cheese did you, did you use? Uh, Kraft Singles American, baby. I think that that's the most appropriate cheese for grilled cheese. I mean, I like other no. things on a grilled uh, cheese, but... I like Velveeta. Is Velveeta acceptable? Yeah, or yeah. Think Velveeta it? Yeah. and Kraft are both very melty. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. They were made to melt. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey. Um, and then the soup that went with it was the borscht. Now, borscht can divide a room because of the beets. So, yeah. is that why beets. you dressed well, it like a minestrone? Anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm on. I'm on board with 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 beets now. Well, like, I, I, I hey. t- I'll tell you my secret is. Um, a nice layer of bacon in there. You're going to be okay. Yeah. Some, the, something about the bacon, the, the fat and saltiness. Um, I think it complements the earthiness of the beets in a way and it, it, it elevates them. And then that sour cream kind of cuts through. It's like a little tanginess that kind of cuts through. Like I've had like a, just, I, I don't like just eating a beet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a beet by itself. It's like, like out of a can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, I feel like when you, use the earthiness of the beet and like other flavors yeah and it really comes together yeah yeah yeah. isn't it funny like there are i, I don't know like there there are certain things like a potato is like no one's just gonna fucking open a, like just bite into a potato right like mm. a, i mean maybe they do maybe people just eat just potatoes raw but like, potatoes you do it? like salt yeah. you do butter you do yeah. sour cream you do bacon you do cheese or whatever on it but it's funny that there's foods like that there's just but they're easy to grow you know i mm. think that's why right it feeds feeds a whole bunch of people if you can grow potatoes right but anyway yeah 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 yeah. and then the uh burger time which i always thought was a very interesting game i don't know like it it was just like i think there was a lot of games around that time where it's just like how can we repackage donkey kong yeah you know like how it is it is like that yeah you're just running around with peter pepper yeah i think that's the little guy Mm -hmm. that chases you yeah and he's and he's running around and so like people were asking me like why is burger time where's the sausage and i was like the the sausage is the bad guy he's like the the first guy that comes at you there's sausage and egg and then like a pickle right pickle guy pickles evil in burger time i thought pickle would be a friend okay so you're peter pepper now there yeah yeah Yeah. that and that's the chef um, the burger on there, like, there's always cheese, oh, cheese on the like two and two of them. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's an aggressive photo. That doesn't <laughs> that doesn't look good? Yeah, it doesn't look happy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was <laughs> it was it was always the idea that he has to run across the burger and make the the individual like the bun fall and then the patty and then yeah. the 
the lettuce and the tomato. Uh, we tried to get some shots where I was just like, okay, I'm just going to drop these one. And in my head, they were just going to land perfectly. Like in the get, no, they were just like the burger was bouncing off and falling over. I was like, well, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Video games. They make it look so easy and make it look so easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> drop things. Uh, I definitely have a childhood memory with burger time because, uh, on my mom's computer, I would play a lot of a lot of games and especially during the summer when she was at work and I was kind of obsessed with like getting an emulator to play all the like old arcade games. And I don't know how I did it, but I installed burger time and swapped it out for our windows operating system. <laughs> and so then my mom had a computer that would just turn on and play burger, burger time. <laughs> wow. I yeah. spent an entire day trying to figure it out before I had to fess up and she came home and I remember she was, she was furious. We had to go take it to like a PC repair person and they had to clear the computer and reinstall everything. But yeah, so <laughs> I've never awesome. had good memories with burger. Time. Did you yeah. at least get to play a couple rounds of burger time before? I was so like, th as soon as I did it, like you didn't I, even enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. I didn't yeah. enjoy <laughs> it because I realized I had fucked everything up and, <laughs> and just like now burger time kind of makes me panic a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. It's like some trauma there. Yeah. It's like uh, PTSD every time you see the game. And then the dessert, which was beautiful. I did a uh, Pac-Man cake. Uh, so I did the, the cake in the shape of Pac-Man. Uh, I went with like a uh, fruit theme because there's all the fruits that he eats. Uh, the cake was a cherry cake. In between the layers was an orange marmalade. And then I had a uh, lemon icing around the whole thing. And it was really good. Also, the, it was cold, which was good. I feel like, you know, cake that's cold... cold cake. Is I like it better. Do you like know. it I better? Did, I didn't realize it, but yeah, yeah. Like I loved like ice cream cakes, like from mm. Dairy Queen as oh, a kid. Like mm. yeah. that, like little like fudge nougat. Like, I don't even know if that's the word, but whatever that yeah. fudge layer was was so good. But like just something about it being cold, I think makes it because normally, it better. Yeah, yeah, normally we would like normally I'd leave it out for like an hour before we like served it to people. Yeah, but like you know we just for space and everything and to keep it out of the way in yeah. the kitchen. And so, yeah, no, I, I'm glad that it turns out well that way. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Casey's getting into some risque pictures of Miss Pac-Man. Nice. I don't know how yeah. that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a good, uh, restaurant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very much. So, um, can we, can we, can we have a Pac-Man themed restaurant, but you know, make it real horny. Yeah. Now, now maybe, type in tappers. Maybe if like the, the authentic arcade bar stop, stops working, we can just, yeah. Um, oh wait, you didn't skip over your fries, by the way. Like those oh, fries on a level of, uh, perfection that I, yeah, it's like, it's something I don't understand. I don't understand it, Zach. Well, yeah. why is this fries? It's so a, good? it's a French fried potato is what it is. No, so he's going to be a real dick here and be like, yeah. But no, he does make the best, like, like freshly cut potato fries because I think that's a really hard thing to do. Uh, it, like, it seems like it's simple. And I think, I think it's something to do with, like, the brining. He does the double fry where he fries them, he par cooks them, pulls them out and lets them rest, and then fries them again. And that's how you get it, like, nice and crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. Oh, okay. what, what did you use for your fat this time? Oh, uh, it was like canola. Oh, just canola? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, it sounds so simple, but salt and pepper on fries. A little salt and pepper. See, you're fries. a piece of shit. I no, see I'm your serious. Face. I'm serious. I feel yeah, like a lot of people, most people just put salt. Just go salt. Yeah. <laughs> I go salt and pepper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think, I think that the, the brine, even if you do it for an, like an hour ahead of time. I really think that brine. I think the brine really, yeah. really Cause like I remember like being I remember being a kid and like my grandma had like one of those French fry like you put a potato in and like yeah. smash it down and it spits out the fries and anytime she would make it she like she would like I don't know she would just like make those and I was like oh we're gonna eat French fries and then she just like throw them in the oven and bake them and then I was just like these are just potato slices yeah. <laughs> like I don't know, this is not a French fry yeah I don't know what it is and there's like oh yeah you have to fry it like it needs to be fried. And, um, yeah, we just had like bags of frozen fries that just got thrown on a sheet pan, and that was yeah, mm, yeah. It's, it's never gonna be the same. Yeah, um, that was my first uh burger charcuterie board, <laughs> that was fun to do. It was a lot. Uh, the whole sausage is on it, <laughs> whole sausage is a garnish. 
<laughs> I think it's a ballsy move. Oh, yeah. And those yeah. are really good sausages, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah. They but weren't those, even like junk sausages. No, no, no. That was Smoking Goose kitchen sink sausage. They were very expensive sausages <laughs> to put on there. Oh, yeah. Because I went back. I was like, wait, we needed to eat these sausages. <laughs> no, no one touched those. Yeah. No, I was like, you know Except what I need me. right now? A full sausage. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was, it was like appetizing on a fork. You're, you're, yeah. Like, was there a point in the meal? Like, it's always very interesting because I, I don't always, I leave it to Thad to like explain like kind of how the the food's gonna come out. So I never know. I feel like sometimes he does a really good job of like telling people like, hey, Tyson did a good a, job. A lot of food's gonna come out, and then sometimes it's just like sometimes people are angry by the end of it. They're just like, why? Angry? Yeah, another why? course. Because there's more. Yeah, yeah no, I, uh, I could eat forever. Honestly, I know. I, uh, yeah, there's not, I don't know, especially on Sunday, you know, I don't mm. know. Sunday just feels like that day. That's like, it's just, there's, there's no, there's no amount of food that's too much on Sunday. I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't have to do shit. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a great you know? day. Yeah. It's a great day to eat food and it's a great day to enjoy Upland beer. Upland yeah. beer. What are you drinking there? Uh, I just cracked open the champagne velvet. All how right. About, how about you? I just cracked open. That was a very natural cheer. So we just, yeah, I was like, well, we're just going to fist bump. Um, <laughs> The Little Dragon uh, is the one I've been drinking lately because I'm trying to lose weight, and it has zero calories, pretty much. I really of. don't think we yeah, can say that. that. That's we alive. checked that and a, found yeah, out it was actually 100, not 110. <laughs> but, yeah. 110, it's zero. It's probably commensurate with most zero. beers. Yeah. But yeah. if you times it by zero, it becomes zero. I well, think so. That's yeah. a fact, yes. Yeah. So yeah. if you drink none of them, you'll have zero yep, calories. That's yeah. a sad that's fact. A, <laughs> Yeah. Guys, I like it. It's like celery. It's <laughs> like like as you're drinking it, it's like it's a net zero. Yeah, it's a yeah, net zero. Yeah, mean. if you run yeah. while you're drinking, it's like celery. Yeah, because it says low <laughs> cal, and then um, the calories down here are in white, so that means negative calories. So you're losing. <laughs> you read low cal. And this is no good logic. Cal. Yeah. Well, low cal, no cal, and and guys, if you want to get that slim body for Christmas, trying to be a, a, a skinny Santa. Uh, drink a little dragon, Upland. Please keep us. I don't think either, I don't think either Skinny. of us are going to be yeah. convincing the uh, diet. <laughs> like like, diet. <laughs> like, you guys want to get excited before Christmas? Smash some Upland beer with me yeah. and that. Yeah, yeah. If you're trying to get sexy like us, yeah. I mean, Doctor Phil Phil's had a brunch. diet book. <laughs> yeah, Doctor Phil did. Yeah, Doctor Phil had a big diet book. <laughs> did he really? Yeah. I mean, he probably had some wise things to say, but yeah, he wasn't drinking Upland though. Nope. And what's that? What's that song sound like? The Upland song. <laughs> I don't think I have it. Uh, I thought that was just gonna acapella it. Breaking away. <laughs> yeah, that song, guys. <laughs> guys, and if you're thinking about sponsoring us as well, uh, we do great jobs at sponsoring <laughs> ads. No one's mad at us. <laughs> and people keep buying. <laughs> no, uh, we do. We do love Upland beer, and they love us for some reason. I don't know. They let us drive their Hummer around, which was really fun. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 That, was there a video of that? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, we we, yeah. They sponsored yeah. our uh, adult summer camp. But oh, the weird thing so we was they made us drink so much Upland <laughs> before driving it. I was like, I don't feel comfortable a whole case. And you want me to whip this around? And like, it's fine. If you hit something. Upland. Yeah, they said if you hit something, that's publicity. I'm like, yeah. really Upland? And I was like, I don't feel comfortable. But I, I heard you can't get hurt in a Hummer. That's, yeah. what, that's, that's what, what they said. They kept saying that. Yeah. You can't get hurt in a Hummer. And I was like, okay. It was like, because to drive a Hummer, you need a nice buzz mm. for the Hummer. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I I wanted to, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about did you did you have any you said you weren't really a video game person but like so like I remember being like a little kid and then like uh, my parents would travel a lot we'd stay in a lot of campgrounds and a lot yeah. of these campgrounds would have like a, one or two co like like uh, cabinets in there or something sometimes they'd have like a full arcade and I like I they would never give me money to play. I would go through and I would just check every place for quarters and I would just kind of like watch or whatever. Um, but video games were always something that like, it was like, seems like right outside of like until I was about until I was old enough to start like digging through the couch for change at home and then like going up to a local arcade and like playing games. Uh, but I just always had this like very young memory of arcade games and I don't, I, th I, I don't know what the cutoff for that is. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there, there's an age where it's just like, yeah, arcade games were there 
whatever. But like, I remember arcade games before, like home consoles. You know, like I remember like the first time like a friend got like a Nintendo, and I was like, they have an arcade in their house. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But did you have crazy? Did you yeah. have any games that like when you were a little kid that were like like Zach was talking about the turtles? Mine was definitely like Simpsons turtles. Yeah, uh, I mean Mario Kart was kind of like the first thing. I mean, I had Mario, so we had an original NES. Uh, but again, like I said, like I think that was like my I was my parents were young when they had me, so they were still mm. like they they were in their early twenties. Like <laughs> you're like they I, bought a Nintendo yeah, so they yeah. could so play. They and bought didn't it for themselves, <laughs> right? Which is fun. I mean, but that makes sense, you know. Mm. In like hindsight, it's like yeah, of course they did, right? Because it's cool, right? But like mm. I remember playing Mario. I had friends that had more games than we did like mm-hmm. right because like their parents were just i don't know you know buy them a buy, buy a bunch of game we just had like the one game that came with the console mm. uh but yeah arcade game like so i grew up actually uh well i don't know until i was six i lived in muncie so there's a bunch of pizza kings there and yeah. they always had like arcade games in there but yeah. i'm trying to think like it was like it was like just pac-man it was just yeah. like the sit down like mm-hmm. uh like cocktail version of the Pac-Man yeah. where you like could still like, I don't know, eat, drink your Coke or whatever and yeah. eat your pizza on the table kind of thing. But yeah. Yeah. And play yeah, it I mean, through the, and not. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember like growing up later, so I'm 37, so I don't know. So I don't like, and I, we moved to Indianapolis like later and then there was like this thing block party. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever went to block party, but it was like that, whatever that rotating, like, uh, like uh, entertainment center thing that just, they all like just fail within like yeah. four years of opening or whatever. But when you, they're really awesome when they first open. Mm-hmm. Right. So I remember going to blog. That was like the cool place to have your birthday party. Uh, I think I might've had a birthday party there, but I went to everybody's birthday that was there. Kind of yeah, like a awesome. poor man, Dave and Buster's kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you I don't, it was almost like, it was like really nice from what I remember, but also, I don't know. Like they had all like the cool, like, like the, like, like, uh, snowboard like thing and like the motorcycle mm. where you get on them like it was like more than an arcade game like like it was like an immersive type arcade thing right Man. this is really nerdy but i've always said if i won the lottery one of the things i want was so you know there's the paperboy game that actually had like the bike yeah yeah like, we have that like handles yeah like i always wanted to do one where like like add like a full bike to it yeah so like and then somehow make it away so you ha- actually have to pedal to make the yeah to, to make the game go oh for like, like a peloton add-on yeah 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 that is cool yeah there but, should be more exercise based games yeah but just make it like there a might little, be. Well, they, they tried like <laughs> you the might Wii just fit. not know what they are yeah. <laughs> yeah they did like the like the Wii fit game like where i don't know if you guys ever tried it but it came with like a. do you think we did <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> well <laughs> but I mean, yeah, but it was cool. Like they had like a, I don't know, like a Pilates thing. Yeah. I think I think it was. I don't know. I did a lot called. of the wee bowling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was, I did the wee <laughs> eating. There was a a, a food based <laughs> wee eat, game. eating simulator. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, you yeah, just bake the Joey food. Chestnut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, you gotta beat Joey Chestnut. You watch a video of him and then try to beat him. <laughs> yeah. What? How did you do that? Like, did you use the controller as like the hot dog? Well, or? you just make the hot dogs and then and then I'm just. Bullshitting. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> Dang it! Damn. Oh, he broke me. <laughs> he broke me, man. I, oh. I will say this uh, about Tappers because not only were you guys the the first ones here in the city, but like I, you know, I'm a traveling comedian, so like I I get to see a lot of other cities like arcade bars. Yeah. And they're not all created equal. <laughs> it seems to be kind of two ways where it's just like you have an arcade that's just like, like I've seen a lot of laundromat arcades and they like they serve alcohol, but this is like, there's not a vibe of any kind of like, it's like somebody dropped off all these games and then left. Yeah. And then there's like a 16 year old like working yeah. the bar and then like. Uh, and then you have ones where they just seem real high end and almost like pretentious, you know? And I, f- I feel like Tappers is like, it seems like even though it's like an arcade bar, it also just seems like a mom and pop kind of thing where it's just like, I mean, you're working there, yeah. you're, you're, you're boots I, on the ground. I think cause it is right. Yeah. So I think like you can see what it is. Like, I mean, it's like, you can't always judge a book by its cover. Right. But I think in those instances, like you probably are right in a mm-hmm. way it's like, and I appreciate that. Right. So, and I think that's what we wanted to go for. Right. It's like, there's this cohesiveness. So like, again, like I'm not so much into games, but I am into like 
the beer and like the design of like the place and the flow and everything else. So like I, we've got, you know, people who have their roles that I think are all working together to complement each other. And we, but we're all there every day. It's not yeah. like we're not, you know, hanging out somewhere, you know, 500 miles away, just mm-hmm. making decisions about a locate. Like we're, we're coming in, you know, every day to make sure that everything's good. So I think that probably is why, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I've been to a lot of those too. You know, I, I kind of, I was traveling around like trying to figure out like what we could do better, uh, at in different and see different versions of the concept. And at a certain point you get to like where you're like, and I don't mean this to sound like, uh, we're the best. There are clearly ones that are better than us, but I mean, but you get to a point where you're like, all right, I'm not, I'm going to stop doing this now because it's like, I'm not really at a certain point you stop learning and you're like, I'm proud of what we have, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah, it's very much a, a neighborhood bar, yeah. you know? And like, and I think that, that's a big part of it. Like it's, it's cool location, you know, and like, yeah, it's very welcoming. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I think that's like, I always like, I think that's the thing that I'm the most proud of there is just like, the thing is like, you can kind of forget, you can check your luggage at the door, right? Like you come in there and like, it doesn't, it's like the first day of kindergarten. None of us have ever met each other before, but like, we're all just excited to kind of be there. Like, I mean, I guess that's, some people are terrified first day Mm. of kindergarten, but like, you know, like that's that like playfulness. That's like, we don't know where anybody, what anybody's background is and there's no judgment. And it's just like, we're all just see each other for like other little kids that are fun to hang out with. Right. Absolutely. Can you drop yeah. a beat for me there? I remember kindergarten just like it was yesterday. Yeah. Austin, thank you so much <laughs> yeah, for dude. coming by yeah. and being on the program. Uh, where can people uh, follow Tappers on social media? Yeah, so the handle is at Tappers Arcade uh, on Instagram and X. It's called X now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Facebook, I think, is forward slash Tappers Arcade Bar. So that's the uh, little odd thing. But yeah, we have a website, TappersArcadeBar.com. Uh, yeah, just you can follow that for, for uh, it, mostly Facebook for events and things. So that's that's how you can kind of follow what we're doing. Yeah. Do you guys keep, did you guys keep up with the Twitch streaming? Uh, no. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool, but it's just, it's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot, yeah. sure. Uh, that is Jay. You guys could find me at Fab McKee on Instagram. Um, you can find me at Tappers. Uh, I'm going to be working there now. I'm, I hired nice, myself. Yes. Surprise. And I'm just kind of like the mascot. Like, I don't do much, right? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> we're not sure yet. Yeah. Are I you mean, the mascot of Harder Brunch, <laughs> too? Yeah. Uh, okay. Move, I'm moving. I'm passing mine on. Go ahead. Zach Rowe. If you like what you hear here, consider joining us at our Patreon. It's $3 a month for bonus episodes every single week where we get a little bit looser and a little bit crazy. And if we have it, we let our hair down. Uh, Casey Campbell, you said you have something to plug this week. Uh, Yeah, for now, you can just follow me on Instagram at Danger Brewer, but keep your eyes open for a GoFundMe I will be posting to help my family get a new safe place to be. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for listening and uh, stick around for the after brunch and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.